And joining us now is John Elliott, Republican strategist and former National Security Council spokesman under President Donald Trump. Uh, John, welcome back. Always so good to see you. Uh, Russia says that it will scale back operations in Kyiv, but as Owen just reported, Secretary of State Antony Blinken does not seem convinced that Russia will do what it says, uh, a sentiment that seems to be echoed by the rest of the Biden administration. I'd like to get your thoughts on that. Yeah, absolutely, Tracy. It's great to join you again. The issue with the statements by Putin and, and his lieutenants who are negotiating down in Turkey are saying that they're going to be pulling back from Kiev and another couple key cities, but there hasn't been any evidence of that on the ground to the point of both the Pentagon as well as uh, Tony Blinken and his team. So the issue here, Tracy, is that we're going to have to have the 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 substance is what it's going to be on the ground. And so we're going to have to wait till there's absolute proof that they are indeed pulling back because to just take his word for it, Putin's word for it right now is just unacceptable. Yeah, uh, uh, Pentagon Press Secretary John Kirby, he held a briefing this afternoon. And he said uh, the Russia is more likely repositioning forces. Um, from your perspective, do you think that's what's happening in Ukraine? I think there is some repositioning of forces, but there is no proof right now that they're actually withdrawing or if they're moving out from from Kiev, which is where they're actually repositioning forces, it looks like they're probably doing that because they're getting some real pushback militarily from the U Ukrainian forces, because the Ukraine forces have done a great job around Kiev being really strong in pushing back against the forces from Russia. And so if Russia is in any way repositioning forces, it's because it's getting tremendous resistance from strong fighting by the Ukrainians on the ground. And John, you mentioned the talks taking place in Turkey. I want to get your thoughts on that. Obviously, previous talks uh, really were not all that fruitful. Do you think they'll be able to make an agreement during these talks? Well, an agreement obviously needs commitment from an agreement. Agreement needs buy-in from both sides. And right now, there's the Ukrainians are probably not wanting to come to the table and give away stuff that they would have done if they're if if they were under the gun from Russian forces a lot more than they are now. In other words, Ukraine forces have done a much better job than anyone expected, including themselves probably. And so for them to agree in Turkey at these talks to having a quick, a quick end to this conflict is maybe not something that they want to do because they, in order to do that, would have to give away some perhaps cities, perhaps the Donbass region, perhaps the eastern Ukraine, that they won't need to do if it continues the way it is right now with their forces doing so well. So if I were a Ukrainian general and if I were on the political side with Zelensky, you better believe that his people are not going to want to give away things that they would have given away if they were really being held their feet to the fire by the Russian forces, which just isn't happening the way people thought. Yeah, John, not a whole lot of time left, but I want to talk about something. As you know, President Biden was in Poland recently. Uh, he made some comments there that really raised a lot of eyebrows, including a comment that seemed to signal wanting regime change in Russia and what sounded like him telling troops that they'd be going into Ukraine. Now, both comments that the administration later corrected. That said, how do you think those comments were perceived by our allies and, and maybe by Russia as well? And quite frankly, do you think those comments were maybe dangerous? Well, there was actually a third, Tracy. You're very right to bring up those two examples. But there was a third where he said, Biden said that we would respond in kind if we were attacked or if, if Ukraine were attacked with chemical weapons, that NATO would respond in kind, which is totally not what's going on. So those are three major statements that need to be walked back. Well, so much more we can talk about, John, but unfortunately we have to leave it right there. Thank you so much for your time and analysis. We really appreciate it.